What is going on guys? My name is Kenji, welcome back to my channel. Hope it's not the first time that you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I mean, I don't know why I'm doing all this. Cheers, Google. What is good? Jesus. What is going on guys? My name is Kenji, welcome back to my channel. Hope it's not the first time you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a fourth year medical student and biomedical science graduate studying King's College London. And if you guys have been following my channel for a while, you know that Anki for me is the way of life. Using Anki flashcards has absolutely changed the game in regards to how I revise. And if I haven't quite convinced you guys as well to use Anki for revising for your exams at university, then go ahead and check out my videos on how I use Anki to revise in medical school and also why I don't take notes anymore in medical school at all. So links for all of that will be up around here somewhere. But if you do use Anki as well, then in this video, I'll be taking you guys through all of the add-ons that I use in Anki that allows me to get more of a better experience out of Anki and actually use it a lot better. And all of these add-ons I will be talking about will be linked below down in the description. So go ahead and check them out. Before we get started, I'll actually quickly show you guys how to actually install these add-ons to your Anki. Uh, so what you wanna do is just go ahead onto Google, type in Anki add-ons, click the first link, and all of these right here are all of the you know different types of Anki add-ons there are. And what's really amazing about Anki is that it's open source. So anyone who's able to code can actually make codes to apply to Anki. And that's what makes it so powerful is that programmers can create codes that will completely change how Anki is used. So let's say for example, you wanna use the, um, I don't know, um, Picmonic uh, add-on. What I do is click Control F and then search for Pic or uh, Picmonic and then straight away it'll find me the uh, add-on here. What I'll do is then go ahead and click on it. And then if you scroll down, there'll be an area that gives you a code to actually type into your Anki, which should be over here. Yeah, so right over there is the code that I actually need to put into Anki. Then go ahead onto your Anki, click on Tools, Add-ons, and then this tiny little box here will jump up. What you wanna do is then click on Get Add-ons, and then it'll tell you to copy and paste the code that you got from the website over here. Copy this code, paste it into there, click OK, and then go ahead and restart your Anki program. And there you have it, all of your Anki add-ons will now be working in your Anki software. But now let's actually go ahead and get started on my favorite Anki add-ons. All right, so the first add-on that I'll be talking about is image occlusion, which has been so good for me in regards to using Anki. The reason why is that when I'm in medical school, I'm trying to memorize a picture or maybe a diagram or a table. What is much easier to do is to copy and paste a actual picture into Anki and then go ahead and hide each individual section. So that when I do come back, I can test myself on each individual aspect of the picture. And I'll show you guys exactly what I mean right now. All right, so if we say the example of, let's say, um, I don't know, the upper limb dermatomes in medicine. So for example, this one here seems really good. And then what I'll do is I'll copy and paste it into Anki and then I'll click on image occlusion up here. And then essentially what I want to do is, let's say if I was trying to memorize all of the different uh, arrows and what all of the different dermatomes pointing to the skin, uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, click on image occlusion and then I'll hide each section. And then what I'll do is I'll click hide all guess one. And essentially what that will do is that it's it's basically hiding all of these numbers here. And those numbers is what I want to memorize and test myself on. So that later on, uh, when this card actually pops up, it'll question me on what one of these uh, numbers here is. And that's so, so essential and so key. Because if you want to actually memorize a diagram, whether that might be you know um, anatomy or physiology or literally anything to do with an image, it's so, so useful to be able to do this. Also where it comes in handy is if you don't necessarily Want to memorize a picture but let's say it's something like a table that you need to memorize so for example here um, if you're not in medical school don't worry about it but this is these are the lumbar puncture results that you get from a lumbar puncture and essentially it's really important in medical school to know whether you know what a normal lumbar puncture result looks like one that's caused by bacteria one by viruses one by fungi and instead of actually having this you know in written form what i can do again is copy this whole entire table because all of this information is what i need to test myself on and then i'll go into anki and again, I'll copy the image there, click on image occlusion. And then what I'll do is actually hide each uh, test result here to test myself on later. So again, uh, draw boxes around each section here. And then again, what I normally do is click hide all guess one. And just to show you guys, when I come to actually study the deck, this is what it shows me. Essentially the red box here means I need to actually recall this information. I'll click enter and it will reveal the actual test results. And it'll do the exact same thing with the picture. It will hide every aspect of the picture and then present it to me like this as well. And that's image occlusion, really, really helpful when it comes to learning new content in the form of a picture or a table. Let's move on to the next one. 
All right, so the next add-on that I have for you guys, which is so, so helpful, is the mini formats pack. And I'll show you guys exactly what that is. If let's say I was adding a new card like you guys can see here, essentially the mini uh, format pack allows me to have extra things like um, different colors. So if I was writing, you know, something new, like uh, let's just say anatomy, I can actually highlight it here or change the color. Um, yeah, highlight it there. Um, I can uh, add bullet points as well. So there's bullet points over here, whatever that might be. There's numbering, absolutely everything. So it kind of adds like a Microsoft Word sort of tab right at the top, which allows you to have all of these extra things. The bad thing about Anki is that it doesn't actually come with all of these things here and doesn't really allow you to edit the font or edit you know, your text in uh, the right way that you want to, which is really helpful for me because I do have loads of cards that um, I like to highlight or add colors to or you know, add in bullet points. So having this mini format pack really allows me to get uh, more creative with my Anki uh, flashcards and I highly recommend you guys use that as well. Let's move on to the next one. The next add-on that I think you guys should really use is the Pigmonic add-on. But before I go ahead and tell you guys what the add-on actually is, I wanna go ahead and tell you guys about what Pigmonic is, who are also kindly sponsoring the video. So I'm actually using Pigmonic for around about a year and a half to two years now, all the way back in my preclinical days, as well as my clinical days. And essentially what it is, it's a service and a software that creates not just a mnemonic, but actually a Pigmonic, which is basically a mnemonic tied with a picture, as well as a story. Once you memorize the picture and the mnemonic, what it actually does is that it gives you a whole entire story to learn and memorize, which makes memorizing huge amounts of content very, very easy. So rather than learning like, you know, individual facts in medical school, what I actually remember sometimes is I remember the story that Pigmonic told me with the pictures as well, in order to understand the disease, in order to understand all my basic biology as well. Once you've actually memorized the Pigmonic and the story, what it actually does is that it gives you a very helpful quiz to make sure that you understand absolutely everything that there is to know on that topic. And if you think that the Pigmonic is really, really good, but there's actually something you want to add yourself from doing your own research and your own kind of reading, you can actually edit the Pigmonics themselves to make it into a better story that you understand even more so. Pigmonic is always, always up to date with loads of students around the world being able to add their own information to the whole Pigmonic database, which is also superimposed by all of the information that the Pigmonic experts add every single day. What's really funny and really cool about Pigmonic is that the characters and the pictures they actually use in the stories are actually similar across all of the different topics, which makes understanding and memorize different topics so much easier. And what's really cool is that they actually have a Pigmonic add-on, which I use all the time and is super, super useful. So for example, if I'm actually reviewing my flashcards. This flashcard over here, for example, is a pulmonary embolism ECG trace. What the actual add-on does is that it actually searches through the words and underlines all of the words that you can actually look up on the Pigmonic database in blue. So for example, here it's picked up the ECG uh, word here. So if I hover over ECG, straight away it gives me loads of information that I need to know about the ECG, as you guys can see here. So for example, an ECG is a non-invasive test that monitors the electrical activity of the heart. It also gives you more information on that as well. And if you guys click the video down here below, it'll then send you to the actual Pigmonic story video that I told you guys about with the whole Pigmonics. So I've never actually seen this ECG video. Let's actually check it out. We have the QRS complex, shown by the Queen's rocket ship complex. The QRS complex measures ventricular depolarization shown by the ventricular discharge of electricity. So this add-on is actually completely free. So it gives you all of this information free of charge. But if you actually want to get Pigmonic for yourself and have access to the full library of content that they have, then I have a unique link down below. They'll give you a nice cheeky discount. But let's move on to the next add-on. All right, so the next add-on that I highly recommend you guys download is the heat map. And when you actually download Anki, um, the actual software and the layout is very, very simplistic. But what the heat map actually does is as you guys can see over here, it adds this section over here, which is a heat map, which allows you to actually look back on your progress when using Anki. So all of these green boxes here are the days where I actually yeah, used Anki. So as you can see, we're right over here, which is uh, today, uh, Sunday. Uh, all of the white boxes are days that I actually missed. So yesterday, the Saturday, I didn't actually revise Anki and goes all the way up and tells me how many days I actually uh, used Anki, which is so, so helpful because I can track my progress. You know, as you guys know, what's really, really important with Anki is to be consistent. And so it allows me to check my consistency. This, this box right here was the 1st of January. So I can see that throughout the whole entire uh, 2021, I've probably only missed around maybe five, six days of use Yankee, um, which gives me lots of motivation and hope for the future. It also tells you, you know, how many streaks you have because 
because yesterday I missed one day. I'm only on a one day streak over here. My longest streak of actually using Yankee has been 26 days. I've learned for 75% of the days and on average I do around 64 cards a day. So having this bit of uh, information here just gives you a bit more of a ability to see how consistent you are with Yankee. And that's absolutely the key to using Yankee is consistency, doing your cards every single day. So I do like having this over here. That's a heat map add-on. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so the next add-on that I have for you guys is called Edit Fields During Review. And I'll just show you guys what that is. Um, so if I go onto one of my decks here, for example, I'll click Study Now. So essentially what I'm doing is going through all of my Anki flashcards as I would every single day. And what this actual add-on does is that it adds a little edit section down here. So let's say, for example, I was reviewing this flashcard here, which says the capital of France is, then I'll click on it and it obviously is Paris. But let's say for example, I actually messed up and it's not Paris, or maybe I wanna add some more information to this flashcard. Rather than going to browse and going back all the way, you know, the really long way of editing a card, it has a little section here which you can click on, which is edits. And then straight away, I can add an edit. So I can say Paris, it is a very big city. So I can literally add whatever I want, click close. And then when I come back to review again, it'll have my you know, additional information that I added. And this is really, really key. You know, whenever I go through my flashcards every single day, I may have learned something on placement or in my reading that I want to add to this flashcard. So having the ability to quickly edit it, um, for me, is so, so useful. And that's why I recommend you guys use this add-on. All right, so the next add-on that has really changed the game for me is the Enhanced Main Window add-on. And I'll be honest, I don't really know this in 100% detail, but it does give me a few um, you know, details that I like to know. Uh, so for example, as you guys can see here, I have loads of extra information on my home screen on Anki. As I said, when you actually download Anki, it's very, very basic, very, very minimalistic. But I do like having a bit more information about the decks I'm going through. So the information that does give you is it'll tell you how many cards you have due today. So for example, in the default deck over here, I have four cards left to review today. It also tells me how many cards I'm learning right now. As well as that, it'll tell you how many I have due today, um, how many cards I haven't actually seen yet. So these might be new cards I added very recently that I haven't actually seen yet. Um, and it gives me a ton of information more that I, um, that I just find very, very useful. I won't go through all of it right now, but as you can see here, it tells me all the to total cards I have, what cards are mature, which cards are young, how many cards have actually repeated all together. Um, and just having a bit more information about where I am in regards to my deck, especially when I'm making new cards and I wanna you know, constantly know what is going on inside, inside my deck with all of these flashcards, having a bit more information on your deck is super, super useful to know where exactly you are in your revision. So for the next add-on, I actually can't really show you guys what it is because it's not really something you can use or see, but essentially it's called Load Balancer. And I found this Anki add-on really useful because when you actually start using Anki, it's really, really weird. On some days you may have 100 cards to review, on the next day you may have 20 cards to review, the next day after that might be you know, 30, 40, it really goes up and down. And I didn't really like that because you don't exactly know what to expect. You know, One day I may have loads of cards to do, the next day I may have really, really few cards to do. Um, which I didn't really find fair. I wanted to review, you know, the same amount of cards more or less every single day and not be surprised by one day, you know, having so many cards to review when yesterday I didn't actually have that many to review. So I found this add-on called Load Balancer and essentially what it does, it adds up all of the cards you have and puts an average uh, on it. So rather than having, you know, 100 cards today and let's say 20 cards tomorrow, it might, for example, give you 60 cards today and 60 cards tomorrow. So make it very even across the days you have left. And it makes the days kind of more fair and not as long as well. So the Load Balancer is really, really good to spread out your cards evenly to stop you from being overloaded on one day and not have enough cards on the next day. That's the load balancer. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so the next Anki add-on that has added a lot of value to me is called the Image Resize Editor. I think that's what it's called. I'll put it up on the screen or down below. Um, but essentially what that is, is let's say you have an image that you want to actually add to your deck. If I had an image here, without this add-on, what's really, really annoying is that you can't actually resize this image. So whatever size the image was before, when you copy it and paste it into Anki, that is the image size that would actually be for the rest of the time. And I found this really, really annoying. You know, some images are really, really small, some are huge. So I wanted a way to resize my own image. And if you have this add-on, essentially, it's really, really simple, but essentially what you can do is you can make it really, really small or really, really big and just resize it to the size you want. Again, it's very, you know, arbitrary, maybe not very, um, you know, helpful to you, but I really, really liked having this because I do have a bit of OCD in this sense. I don't like having, you know, crazy big um, images. I want to have the perfect size that I want to choose for myself. Let's move on to the next one. 
All right, so for the next add-on that I use in Anki, uh, this add-on is actually called Tag, uh, Tags Are Mandatory. And the reason why this is really good is because when I'm actually making my cards, I wanna make sure that I always, always, always add a tag. The reason why is because I like to be very, very organized with Anki. Uh, and just to show you guys um, very briefly, I do have um, all of my notes organized into different sections. So I have flashcards on cardiology, emergencies, endocrinology, geriatrics. I do like organizing all of my flashcards into the relevant kind of medical uh, specialty. But the annoying thing is sometimes when I'm making your notes, I can sometimes forget to add a tag. And it's so annoying if you spend a whole entire session adding cards and you forget to add tags, it can be really, really long to go back and add tags to it. So I found an actual uh, Anki add-on that makes sure that I can't add a new card without having a tag. So just to show you guys briefly if i made a card here you know just randomly uh, and i didn't actually add a tag and clicked add what i'll do is that i'll get a pop-up here saying please add a tag and i can't actually add this flash card until i have a tag down below and that's super useful because it prevents me from making loads of cards that are not organized into the tags and decks that i want so those are pretty much all of the add-ons i've used day to day on anki if you guys have any add-ons that you think are really, really useful please leave a comment down below and i'll add it to the description of this video i think it'd be really cool if we can get like a good list of you know really helpful add-ons that we can all share with one another and we can all get better at using anki if you guys think this video has been useful please leave it a thumbs up make sure you're subscribed as well leave a comment down below to let me know turn post notifications on as well so you know whenever i'm posting thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you on the next one